Hi, and welcome to this video on arithmetic series, part one, brought to you by the answer series. In the previous video, we worked with an arithmetic sequence, which means we worked with consecutive terms separated by a common difference. But now we are going to be adding the terms. And when we add the terms in an arithmetic sequence, we call it an arithmetic series. So there are going to be many familiar concepts, Tn, still represents the general term. A is the value of the first term, D is the common difference, and N is the position of the term that has a value of Tn, so no changes. When we add those terms together, the first term, the second term, the third term, up to and including the nth term, we need a formula because we can't really be expected to add 100 terms without some shortcut. And the formula that we are going to derive, because you can be asked to do this in exams, is that the number of terms that you are adding divide by two, multiplied by twice the first term, plus n minus one times the difference. That's the formula that we will use to work out the sum of n terms. Now, there's a wonderful shorthand to that formula, and that is that if you happen to know the value of the last term, you can multiply the number of terms divided by two, by the sum of the first and last terms, which is amazing. Okay, none of this will make a lot of sense until we have derived the formula and until you have become more comfortable with the use of the formula. There are six steps, which might be alarming, but it does mean that you know exactly what you're doing if you know your steps. So step one, expand the series. That means write it out in full. Step two, reverse the order of that expanded series and write it down again. Step three, add the columns of the terms in matching positions. I'll explain this to you in a minute. Step four, add all the like terms together. Step five, divide both sides by two. And then finally, step six, replace Tn with a plus n minus 1d. Okay, so the question that we have to deal with now comes up in exams as a theory question. Prove that the sum of n terms is equal to the formula that you've been given. So how do we do this? Step one, expand. So we write down the first term, the second term, and the third term. We put dot, dot, dot for all the terms in between, and we write down Tn, which represents the last term. Then step two is reverse the order. So now we're going to write down the exact same values, but notice that the last term is first, then the second last term, then the third last term, and then eventually the first term. Step three, add the columns. So if we add the left, we get twice the sum. If we add the first column, we get the first term plus Tn. If we add the second column, we get the first term plus Tn. If we add the third column, notice that when you're adding, the differences are cancelling each other out each time. So each and every column adds up to the exact same value. In shorthand, which is step four, we now have twice the sum that we're looking for equal to n times the value of each result because we've got n of those like terms being generated. Step five, divide both sides by two. So now the sum of n terms, which we are trying to work out a formula for, is n over 2 times a plus tn, but that doesn't look quite like it's supposed to look. So at the end, you take tn out of that formula and replace it with its value, which is what we do over here. So now if we add the two a values together, we get 2a plus n minus 1d. Okay, you're going to need to pause the video, and you're going to need to process this again in your own time, and then practice it with pen and paper until you're comfortable with it. When you get a question, you have a choice of formulae and you have to think about what you're doing. So your choices are, use the formula the way we've just derived it. And this is what you're going to do if you don't know what the value is of the last term. So depending on which unknowns you're given, notice that there are four unknowns in the formula. You need to have three in order to be able to work out the fourth. And they can decide what information they're going to give you and that will determine how you're going to use the formula. It is, however, very definitely possible that you don't want to use that formula. If the last term's value happens to be given, it is often easier to use the formula that we proved 
before substituting in the value of Tn. So n over 2 times a plus the last term can be used to avoid having to actually work out the d value. Try example 1 on your own, and then I will go through it with you. Okay, so the starting point should be to take note of what the formula looks like and what you need to find and what you know. So basically, you are going to always think about the variables that you have been given. Now, in this particular term, notice that there's no value on the end there. I have absolutely no idea what the last term is. And in that case, this is my only option. So on the side, make a note for yourself. Sn is an unknown because it's what you've been asked to find. You know that your a value is 29. You know that your d value is negative because the terms are dropping in value. It's negative 7. And you know that you have 20 terms because they have asked you to work out the sum of the first 20 terms. Okay, if you got stuck, use these values that we've worked out together. Try it again and then check your answer. Careful substitution. 29 for the a value, 20 for the n value, and minus 7 for the difference. And your sum is minus 750. Pause the video and try this again if that didn't make sense to you. Right, example two, look at the hint. There's an easy way to do the question, so pause and think before you rush in, and then I will go through it with you. What I'm hoping you noticed is that the last term's value was given. And in that case, it is much easier to use the formula n over 2 times a plus tn. The reason why this is easier in this situation is I don't know the d value, and if I use the other formula, I will have to work it out. So using this method makes this question very easy. We know we're working with 42 terms, so we start with substituting 42 over 2. The a value has been given as 24. The last term is given as 803. And all we have to do now is put that into our calculator and work out the answer. Okay, so the answer there is 17,367. I suggest you pause the video and try the question again on your own if that didn't make sense to you. Example 3, we have the first term and we have the last term and so we have choices. Now there are three questions given here which is quite interesting. The first question is work out a formula for the nth term. This question is scaffolded. By that I mean they have broken it down into parts. So the question would be very difficult if it started, which is possible in some instances. If that started at 3.3, .3, then you would have had to work through 3.1 and 3.2 without actually being told to do that. And the purpose of the two earlier questions is that nowhere in the information that they've given you do you have any idea how many terms you're working with. And you cannot work out the sum if you don't know how many terms you're adding. So be aware that you might have to do the calculations that you've been asked for here in 3.1 and 3.2 without being asked to do so next time. All right, pause the video, try all three questions on your own, and then I will go through them with you. Ideally, you want to save time in questions like this. So if you're up to the challenge and you remember the basics from earlier videos, you should be able to, by inspection, recognize that the terms are dropping off by five and that if you want to substitute and get, get six, you're going to have to add 11. If that doesn't make sense, then fall back on a plus n minus 1d and check that you get the same answer as the answer that you have been given here. Minus 5n plus 11. Okay, so both methods are provided. Pause the video again and check both if you need to. More important question now is how many terms do we actually have? So we're going to equate the value of the nth term, in other words the last term, with the formula that we have just worked out. And we end up working out that n equals 50. And we need this because if we don't have that information, we can't work out the sum. Pause the video again, see if you can work out the sum of the terms now, and then we can check the answer together. I 
I've done this with both methods because I can. And why can I? Because I know the last term value is minus 239. I know that I have 50 terms, and I know that the first term is 6. So the shortest method is to add the first and the last term, if you have them both, and then multiply that sum by the number of terms divided by 2, which gives us our answer. Alternately, we can substitute the first term into the formula and the number of terms minus 1 and the difference and work out the exact same result. So you can choose the method that you prefer in this situation. Thank you for watching this video, brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.